DevOps is a confusing term. Some people use it as a synonym for just operations. Some seem to think of it as some kind of secret source that's going to solve all the problems for software. And some see it as just about culture. There's some truth in all of these and some falsehood too. So what is it about DevOps that makes it so confusing? Hi, I'm Dave Farley of Continuous Delivery. Some people refer to me as one of the godfathers of DevOps. When my friends hear that, to be honest, they laugh because they know that I don't really like the term DevOps very much. And that's really, though, just me being picky about terms. I believe profoundly in the ideas, the rationale of DevOps. Some of the uh, people that are, are DevOps proponents and well known for that, that statement are very good friends of mine and I see us as allies in a common cause. We are describing the same approach to software development, maybe from slightly different perspectives, but we are talking about the same thing. So what does DevOps really mean and how can we get to, to grips with this a little bit more? So although this is about me being picky with words, let's start with the words for a moment and just think about what that means. I think that if you approach software development from the perspective of uh, being involved in DevOps and thinking about it from that, that, that point of view, then you will perceive it rather like this. DevOps is this broad cultural approach to releasing software quickly into production and continuous delivery is a component of that approach. I think that if you are approaching this, this development discipline from the other end of the spectrum, maybe from extreme programming or continuous delivery, you will see it rather like this, where continuous delivery is this, this whole holistic approach and DevOps is this component of that. I think both of these viewpoints are somewhat right and somewhat wrong, and so that's not terribly helpful, but it is a matter of perspective. In large, we are always talking about the same ideas. DevOps is an important idea and is much bigger than only about the collaboration or the relationship between development and operations. So what does DevOps really mean and why is it so important? Len Bass, Ingo Weber and Liming Zhu define it as a set of practices intended to reduce the time between committing a change to a system and the change being placed into normal production while ensuring high quality. I think that's an excellent description. My only reservation with that description is that that sounds quite a lot like continuous delivery. I define continuous delivery as working so that your software is always in a releasable state. So we're trying to make, in both cases, we're looking to make small changes that are always releasable and we're working to try and minimize the gap between commit and production ready software. Many of you will have seen this picture. Uh, this is a common uh, icon for DevOps that's, that's, that's widely used. Um, and it's kind of correct and not correct at the same time. This tends to reinforce the rather narrow view of DevOps, which is that it's about the relationship between development and operations, which is what the name says it's about. And if you approach um, this discipline from that perspective, then that means that you're going to think in these terms. This is about um, optimizing to make sure that you can kind of plan and code and build and test and release and deploy and operate and monitor, and that those things are about the collaboration between the teams to make those effective. But you can also look at this picture and you can say, okay, so developments are responsible for planning, coding, building and testing and operations are responsible for releasing, deploying operations and monitoring. And those are not really correct. What we're looking to do is to blur the boundaries and make everybody somewhat responsible for all of these things. We want operations people to help us make code that's more operable and we want development people to be involved in the monitoring of what's going on in production so that they can see the impact of their work. And that's true about all of these other activities too. 
It's also true that we should be going beyond just the relationship between development and ops. It's about more than that. DevOps is about more than only the relationship between dev de development and ops. And that's where we get into kind of, forgive me, but slightly silly portmanteau terms like DevSec ops and DevSec biz ops and what about DevSec test biz ops and what about DevSec coffee biz ops. It gets starts to get silly quite quickly. And partly that's a matter of encapsulation. I'm a software developer and I tend to think in terms of software development and the ter one of my objections to the term DevOps, objections is the wrong word, my reservations with regard to the term DevOps is that it, it's not accurate. It talks about this relationship in the name, it says about the name of DevOps and you can then get the, end up with a relatively sim simplistic view of what we're talking about like this. But it doesn't, it, it encompasses much more than that. So when we wrote the book, Continuous Delivery, I, I can guarantee you that we were aware of the need to do security testing and provenance and monitoring and all of those things. And those are touched on in the book, but we didn't make them clear enough. And so that's partly our fault. But this is a broad discipline. Fundamentally, what we are talking about in both continuous delivery terminology and DevOps terminology is to have an idea to get that idea into the hands of users and to figure out what the ideas and what the users make of those ideas as quickly and as efficiently as we can. And in order to achieve that, that requires an approach of collaboration and discipline and automation and, and all of those things focused on achieving that result. It requires collaboration between dev and ops and ops and test and dev and test and production and test and users and developers and operations and product owners and, and so on and so on and so on. This leaks out and it touches the whole organisation ultimately. And that's true whether you're approaching this from a DevOps perspective or a continuous delivery perspective. So let's start thinking about what that means and how these ideas impact on the activities that surround software development. I think when most people think in terms of continuous delivery, they probably start here. We're talking about build automation, test automation, maybe infrastructure as code, deployment automation, deployment pipelines. Those are kind of core ideas for continuous delivery. Uh, and we went into quite a lot of details about those when we described them in our book. But then you can start adding on some of the, the DevOps ideas. And here's where we get into the complexity of the DevOps term. If we are genuinely taking the narrow view of DevOps and thinking about the relationship between Dev and Ops, then we certainly have to surface that to make, to be able to deliver change, use, taking advantage of that or test automation and deployment automation and so on. But then we also need to start adding in things. Yes, but it doesn't include security. It doesn't include the business. And so we, we, get, we get involved with these terms like DevSecOps and DevBizOps and so on. And, but that's not enough either. Well, what about um, uh, the relationship between Dev and Product, Dev and QA, Product and so on? So we need to add those into our picture of the activities that are involved. And that's not enough either. If we genuinely want to get to this point where we can frequently, regularly um, make changes and be in a position to deliver those into production, we need to think about the way that the requirements process works. It needs to be able to work in that world of fast, frequent change. We need to think about the broad testing strategy, how to put all of these things together and how to get to a point of understanding that our software is releasable multiple times per day. That has an impact on software architecture, which in turn has an impact on team structure. All of these things are tools that we can use to improve our ability to deliver releasable, valuable change into production multiple times per day. And in order for all of those to work, we need to really serious, take seriously ideas like collaboration, software product selection, can we version control it, can we automate its deployment, product design, how, do we, how can we learn from this amazing machine that allows us to put change into production and refine our, our, and deepen our, the understanding of the products that we create. And that, then we get into ideas like experimental businesses. If we're going that far, we then need to take seriously ideas like governance, 
governance, financing and incentives. The wrong sort of governance, the wrong sort of incentives can put a break on the abilities for, of teams to work quickly, efficiently and to collaborate effectively. These two are tools, in this case organisational tools, that we can use to better achieve a better outcome. And then we get into the ideas of monitoring, observability, A-B testing, product lifecycle, release strategy. I would argue that all of these things are components of continuous delivery. Um, iterative planning, evidence-based decision making, lean management. You can't really operate a continuous delivery or DevOps team at real scale with real quality without taking all of these things seriously. S site reliability engineering, chaos engineering, evolutionary architecture, iterative design, they are all profoundly important components of our ability to go from idea to working software in the hands of users delivering value. A better way of thinking about DevOps is to think, of, is to think about it more broadly rather than just the narrow words that people uh, it's easy for people to misinterpret. We can think more broadly about what the cultural impact is. And I quite like Gene Kim's model of the first way, which is about systems thinking, the second way, which is about amplifying feedback loops, and the third way, which is about the culture of continual experimentation of learning. If you've read anything else that I've written, or watched any other of my videos though, you'll understand that I would talk about precisely those things except I would talk about them in the context of continuous delivery. So I don't think that distinguishes DevOps from continuous delivery, but they are certainly vitally important and foundational concepts for both of these practices. Other DevOps idea, uh, there's the, the CAMS model, culture, automation, measurement, sharing. Again, these are not alien to the ideas of continuous delivery, but are foundational for DevOps. I would describe continuous delivery, the ability, if we think about the words in the continuous delivery terms. So we are trying to strive to be in a position to continuously be able to deliver ideas into production. If we take that interpretation of continuous delivery, then it encompasses all of the things that we've talked about. And that requires excellent performance in the technical aspects of software development, the organisational aspects of software development, how do we structure teams and so on, and the cultural aspects of software development. What are the disciplines that we need to adopt within those teams? I tend to talk about continuous delivery in that frame. I see it as this broad holistic approach to software development. So in summary, the way that I would define DevOps is to say it's a synonym for continuous delivery, at least my flavour of continuous delivery, which is to optimise from idea to valuable working software in the hands of our users so that we can figure out what our users make of our ideas. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>